So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming in. Looks like we have about 37 or so, so that's a good number. A little over half of our normal uh, algebra numbers, so it's good. Uh, so we're gonna just do a bit of practice today. Uh, as I said, it's gonna be, let me just uh, share this screen back again. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at, this worksheet today. Um, you don't necessarily have to print it. Um, we'll go over this uh, motion, vertical motion formula and what it means. We'll do a practice problem number one, practice problem number three here, and then you guys will do uh, for a grade by Friday, uh, problem two and four, all right? So we'll look at uh, how to do those and um, how they relate to what we've been talking about with quadratic equations in particular and quadratic functions as well, because it's not just necessarily the equations that we're gonna be solving, but we'll need to know something about the graph of a particular function as well, like um, vertex in particular is something that we will need. So we'll be looking at this. Um, so where we're gonna start actually is we'll I've already copied this over to the first problem over to our whiteboard. Um, before we get started completely though, I do wanna let you know that we do have a test, not this Friday, but the following. So again, May 15th. So we'll do a couple of days of practice on um, the word problems that we'll be looking at uh, today and on Wednesday. Uh, Friday, your work for those things will be due, and we'll have a uh, set of office hours in the morning for you guys, for everybody actually from 9 to 11, in case you got any additional questions before those things are due at 11 o'clock on Friday. And then uh, the following week, we will do um, some practice, uh, practice test and review of that practice test uh, the following week, and then the test itself will be that Friday. All right, so let's uh, see what we got here. All right, uh, any questions just about the schedule for the next couple of weeks? We do only have four weeks left to school, guys, so hang in there, we're almost there, all right? So, um, all right, so let's take a look at this uh, set of problems down here. And uh, the formula in particular. So this is called the vertical motion formula. And the vertical motion formula is really a physics formula. So you guys have probably been doing some physics things in, uh, in science, I believe, right? So um, this is actually a formula in, uh, in physics. So what it says is this H stands for height, okay? So the height of an object at any given particular time. So the T is time. All right, you'll see the definitions here of variables h is the height and t is time. So uh, we've talked about this before with any function that we talk about independent and dependent, right? So in this situation, the h, the height is dependent on how much time something has been. So we're, we're talking about thrown objects, dropped objects, uh, anything that in its motion would be going upward and then downward, okay? So, um, and if you think about it, uh, anything that you throw, right, goes in a parabolic pattern. So if you throw a ball, uh, if you punt a football, if you uh, hit a golf ball, if you, whatever you're, if you're throwing something, it goes in a parabolic pattern. It goes up and then eventually it'll go down and it follows a parabolic shape. Okay, so that's why we have these quadratic uh, equations involved in this, because of um, that parabolic shape that takes is is taken by anything thrown, dropped, um, kicked, whatever it might be. Okay, so this uh, involves a couple of other variables as well, though. And these variables all become numbers for us in these problems. The only thing that remains variable is the t squared, the t, and the h over here, okay? All the rest of this gets filled in with actual numeric information, 
So the negative one half is always part of the formula and it's related to gravity. So depending on the gravity constant that is given, in the US we use the feet per second. Outside of the US, obviously we use metric, so 9.8 meters per second squared. So the 32 feet per second is what we get here. So a lot of times this formula, when it's written out, will already have this part, this portion of it. Oops, I don't want to erase like that. So it'll always have, not always, but often have that portion of the uh, equation or formula simplified for you already using the uh, American um, 32 feet per second squared. So normally they're going to take that negative one half and multiply it by the 32. So this just becomes negative 16. All right. So we'll see that in some of our, um, and it's t squared usually. All right. And then plus the v sub zero times t plus h sub zero. All right. So that's normally what this one looks like in U.S. Uh, situations. So um, if you look down on the original sheet, some of our problems will already see this simplification, right? It, it'll have this negative 16 t squared. It might have a number here and might have a number here. Okay, so uh, that's what this is. Now this number is v sub zero is the initial velocity. So it'll give us uh, oftentimes, a, an initial velocity, if something is thrown or kicked, it'll tell us the velocity at which it is thrown or kicked. Okay, so that will be a number. And we'll look at that in this first problem. And then h sub zero is the initial height at which it is thrown or kicked. So if you're throwing something from the top of a roof, or if you're kicking something off of a T, for example, right? It might be a little bit higher than zero, but if you're kicking it off the ground, right? Or throwing it from ground level, this would be the uh, height would be zero, right? Or if you are dropping something, let's say you're dropping something from a, uh, you're at the top of a building and you drop something off the side, it'll have a parabolic uh, drop to it, but, it won't have an initial velocity because it's simply just dropped. So this portion uh, of the equation might be a zero if you're dropping something, right? It might not have an initial velocity if you're simply just dropping, okay? Um, or if you're, again, if you're kicking it or throwing it from ground level, right? It might not have that number, okay? So that's what this formula is. And it's, as you can see, it is a quadratic uh, equation. So we're going to be looking at certain situations of um, how to use this and where our information comes from. So in some situations, our information is going to be coming from solving this equation. In other situations, our information is going to be from graphing this as a function. All right. So we'll look at uh, all of those different possibilities here in this uh, set of problems. All right. So let me get some of this. Right, so we'll just get rid of all of that actually for now. And we'll just rewrite it up here off to the side so that this is sometimes negative 16 t squared plus whatever that initial velocity is plus whatever that initial height is. Okay. So um, this is, uh, I'm not sure why they give the silly name, but um, I think it has something to do with the school that this probably was generated from are the Patriots. So Patty Patriot is competing in a hot air balloon festival from a balloon directly over a target. She throws a marker with an initial upward velocity of 32 feet per second from a height of 200 feet. Okay. So this information, always pay attention to uh, velocity and uh, initial height, okay? Because that's going to be these numbers, all right? If we're using uh, American gravity, this is always going to be our number. The negative 16 is always going to be our number because gravity constant doesn't change regardless of where you're throwing or kicking or dropping things from, okay? So what numbers will change is this VO, this initial velocity, and this H sub zero, the initial height. All right, so for this equation, 
we are going to write uh, an equation for the height of the marker in terms of the time since. So we're using this equation. We're just replacing the V sub zero and the H sub zero. So we're gonna say that this equation for number part A is H, right? The uh, height in terms of time is gonna be negative 16 T squared plus V sub zero here is 32. Okay, make sure that they're using feet per second. Okay, if they're not using feet, we may have to convert this um, to something that matches this because it needs to be the same type of unit. So if they were doing uh, inches per second, we'd need to convert it to feet so that it matches the gravity uh, information. Okay, so pay attention to that. But normally they're not gonna try and trick you on that too much, but just pay attention, make sure that it does match feet per second. Okay, so that's 32 times T, the T stays there. And then initial height in this case is 200 feet. Again, make sure it is feet. Don't use, uh, if they give it to you as, you know, you know, 84 inches off the ground is the height of a throw or something, make sure to convert it to feet and use that as your initial height, okay? Any questions on how I wrote that initial equation based off of this vertical motion formula. All right, doesn't look like we have any questions at this point. So continue on to part B. Uh, actually, Kyla's got a question here. Let me locate her real quick on my info. All right, good afternoon, Kyla, what's up? Hi, um, I just had a really quick question. So is the, um, is the negative one half uh, and then G always gonna be negative 16? If we're using the American, yes. If, you, if they're giving you stuff in meters, it would be whatever 9.8 times one half, negative one half is. So negative 4.9, I think, yeah. So okay. if they're giving you stuff in meters, you would use negative 4.9 you stuff in feet at negative 16. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so let's, uh, let's get back to that problem then. So part B is what do we know about the height of the marker when it hits the ground? And use this information to set up an equation to find the time it takes for the marker to hit the ground. Well, Hopefully we all understand that the height of the marker as it hits the ground, height is always compared to ground level, okay? So if we are talking the height of the marker at the ground, right, that is going to be a zero height, right? It's zero feet at that point. So the height of this marker is going to, when, we, when it hits the ground, is gonna say zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 32 T plus 200, okay? So for that uh, problem, when we're talking about when does it hit the ground, all right, that zero is because there is no height of the marker at that time, it's on the ground. Okay, questions about that? Okay, uh, so uh, actually real quick, so, What's up, Jules? All right, I got lost. Wait, is that for part A on question one or is that for part B, the one that you just explained? So the, this, this one here is A, right? Uh -huh. That's the uh, equation of the height at any point given uh -huh. time, okay? And this one is specifically when the marker hits the ground, okay? Because okay. there's no height at that time, okay? Yes, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, so on to part C. It says solve your equation from part B and show all your work and round your answers to the nearest 10. So uh, this equation does not look terribly friendly right here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of simplification, all right, and I may have to come back and kind of erase some of this work, so make sure to copy down what we're doing because I want to have, have uh, room to show all these different parts. All right, so let me just label these so we make sure that we got all this uh, written on here. So this is A, right, and this is B, right? So what we're looking at is C is solving this equation, all right? Um, 
we've got an A coefficient that's negative, we've got a B, and we've got a uh, C term. So I could try factoring this, but the factoring of this is gonna be kind of gross, I'll be honest with you, uh, because of this negative coefficient on the front. So what works best in these situations is to try and simplify if you can, and then use the quadratic formula. All right, that's gonna be your easiest thing to do when solving these. Uh, because again, the quadratic formula works for anything. So whether this factors or not, we don't know right now. And factoring with a negative first term is difficult. So what I would say is I'm gonna divide everything by a common factor here, okay? Um, they are all even, so I could divide them all by at least a two, all right? But if I look at the next even number, they're also all divisible by four. Um, and if I look one more time, they're also all divisible by eight, okay? So I'm gonna divide everything by eight to just simplify my numbers, okay? Um, so when I divide this by um, eight, it's gonna give me 25. So I'm just gonna divide everything by the common factor of eight here. Okay, so that, uh, and this is part C that I'm doing. So starting there, so zero equals negative uh, two T squared plus four T plus 25, all right? A little friendlier uh, set of numbers for our quadratic formula then, all right? So again, our quadratic formula that I'm plugging in is, into is negative B, so the opposite of B is gonna, and this is gonna tell me what T is equal to here. It's normally X, but we're using time, okay? So t is our time. So t is gonna equal the opposite of b, so in this case, negative four, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a, a is negative two, times c, c is 25, all right, all over two a. All right, so two times negative two. All right, so um, just gonna simplify what's in here. All right, I'm just gonna scoot this up a little bit. So we'll simplify what's in the radical first. So we'll get negative four plus or minus, this is 16, okay? So I'll just put this off to the side in a different color, what's happening for the b squared minus four ac. So this is 16, this is negative four times negative two, that's eight positive eight times 25, that's gonna be 200, okay? So 200 uh, is in there. So what's in here in the radical is 216, all right? And this is all over uh, negative four, all right? So let's check 216 as a square root. I don't remember off the top of my head if that is a square root or not. Let's see here get to my calculator. So 216, that's not a perfect square. So four point, uh, let's just round it to the, what did it say? Did it say to round to the nearest tenth? So yeah, we'll round it to the tenth. So 14.7, uh, let's say. All right, so we're gonna get uh, negative four plus 14.7 divided by negative four or negative four minus 14.7 divided by negative four. All right, I've got a couple of hands. I'm not in a message. Let me check our chat message real quick. All right, so Cameron, thank you. And let me check the hand here. It's like Mia, what's up Mia? Hi, um, is this going to be on the test? Is this going to be on the test? Yes. Uh, possibly, yeah. Okay, Why would I, I just, do it otherwise? <laughs> I was just wondering. All right. So um, with this, uh, let's just sim finish simplifying all of that. So we've got, uh, let me just actually switch to my calculator instead of my phone. This will go faster. So uh, negative four plus 
14.7 divided by negative four is 2.675. We'll just say two, if we're rounding again, we'll just call that uh, 2.7 approximately. All right, and then the other is uh, negative four minus 14.7 divided by negative four. Uh, let's see, something didn't come out right there. It should have been a negative 2.7, I believe. That's the problem. So that was a negative 2.7. And this is a 4.7 approximately. All right, so those are our two solutions there. Now, um, so that was uh, part C that we were looking at. All right, sorry, let me move stuff for you. Uh, now, part D is how many solutions do you have? Okay, uh, before we continue, any questions on how I use the quadratic formula to get to those two solutions? All right, just again, kind of process through, all right? Uh, so part D says, how many solutions do you have? Well, obviously we have two solutions, okay? Uh, do all the solutions make sense in the context of this problem? So what we're talking about again is that this is time. So both of these are time. And since we're talking about feet per second, these are seconds, okay? So one of these does not make sense, all right? You can't have negative time, all right? It won't take negative 2.7 seconds for that marker to drop to the ground. Well, it will. what it will take is 4.7 seconds for that marker to drop to the ground, okay? So um, explaining our answer there, do all the solutions make sense in the context of this problem? And we would simply say, no, the negative time does not make sense since time can't be measured negatively. Okay, so any questions about the response to that problem or how we would sort of justify or answer that question? All right, uh, so part E then is graph the height of the marker versus the time it was thrown, or sorry, graph the height of the marker versus the time since it was thrown, uh, sorry, one more time, let's try reading. Reading is fundamental. So the graph of the height of the marker versus the time since it was thrown is a parabola, okay? We've already talked about pretty much all of these vertical motion formulas, I shouldn't say pretty much all of them, uh, are parabolas. So what very special point on that parabola represents the maximum height of the marker? Using your knowledge of quadratic graphs in standard form, find the coordinates of that point, okay? So, first of all, what in any parabola is the maximum height of a parabola that has a negative a coefficient? Well, again, maximum and minimum, regardless of how that parabola is working, the maximum value for a parabola that opens down because of a negative a value like this is going to be the vertex, okay? So part E to this, is that, I'm just gonna move some of this down. I'm just gonna erase this real quick so that doesn't keep traveling with us. So let's see. Oops. All right, so we're gonna move that up here actually so it doesn't travel with us, but it will, oops, I don't wanna zoom out. Stop it. Sorry about that. Now I'm zoomed in too much. All right, try this again. All right, so down here, part uh, E. A little bit more. All right, so part E says, uh, what is the, so part E, the vertex is gonna be our maximum. And for vertical motion, it's always a maximum. You're always gonna have that negative leading coefficient, okay? 
Um, all right, so Courtney's asking, uh, why are there so many parts to the question? And if this is on the test, will it also have six parts? No, probably not. Um, the uh, test problem will probably be more along the lines of uh, some other problems that we'll look at on Wednesday. So uh, this one just is giving us sort of an overview of all the different types of questions that could occur, okay? So um, your test problems won't be this multi-part. Okay. All right. Uh, so vertex is the maximum. And um, how do we find a vertex point from a function rule? Well, if we go back to our function rule uh, initially here, right, it was uh, h equals negative 16 t squared plus 32t plus 200. Okay. And if we recall, we can find our axis of symmetry first and then find our vertex. So our axis of symmetry, and this is honestly where most of the questions that you would uh, encounter on the EOC are these types of questions, this part of the question. Okay, what would be the maximum height of this thing at a given point, okay? Um, or what would be the time at that maximum height? Or how long would it take to hit the ground? So it might be this part of the question, or it might be this part that we're looking at normally, okay? So first part we need to find the, the vertex point is the axis of symmetry. And if we recall the axis of symmetry, in this case we'll say uh, X or T, is the opposite of B over 2A, right? It's the part that's not the discriminant, okay? That negative B over 2A from the uh, quadratic formula is what tells us our axis of symmetry, okay? So all we really need to do is find that. That'll tell us the time at which it reaches its maximum height, and then we can plug it back in to figure out what that height is, okay? That'll tell us our vertex. So our vertex uh, X value, or in this case T value, is just the opposite of B over 2A, the part that's not the discriminant in the quadratic formula. So we would say negative 32 over uh, two times A, we'll just call it negative 16 again. So that's negative 32 over negative 32, which is one, okay? So it took one second for it to reach its maximum height, okay? Now we just need to know what that maximum height is. So to find that, we're just simply gonna go back into this uh, function rule, okay? and evaluate it for uh, time being one, okay? So we'll say h equals negative 16 times one squared plus 32 times one plus 200. All right, so this is negative 16 because that becomes one when we square it times negative 16 is negative 16. 32 times one is 32 plus 200, right? These are always uh, related in some way. If you recall, when we looked at this, right, the second term is usually double in some way the first. Uh, so this is actually, when we add those together, is 16 plus 200. So our height at one second is 216 feet in this situation. So that was uh, one second. So, the maximum height, the vertex point of that graph, if we were to graph it, is one second, time being x, and 216 feet being our y value, okay? So, uh, using appropriate units, this, that was part E, but it really kind of leads us into part F as well, all right? Using appropriate units, interpret both coordinates of the point you found in the context of the problem. So we did just do that, okay? That the one is one second, the 216 is the feet. So as she's in this uh, hot air balloon or whatever she's in, right? She throws that marker up at one second, it starts to come back down and lands there. So this total height from her throwing it out of the Hot air balloon, yay, hot air balloon. Um, 
throwing it out of that, right? So from here to the ground was 200, but her height, she basically reached a, an additional height by throwing it up of 16 feet. That was this part, right? And then the 200 is the remainder. So the total height from maximum height to the ground was 216 feet. And it reached this maximum vertex point at one second. And then the total time from the throw back down to the ground was that 4.7 seconds. Okay, so a lot of parts, yes, for sure. Uh, the three things that you will usually get asked in these problems, but you have to be able to set up uh, a portion of this initially, is this part of it or these two parts, okay? Something about the vertex or something about how long does it take it to get back to the ground, right? Those, whoops. Those will be the things that you'll get asked in these problems, okay? So you'll either need to be able to find the vertex, that's kind of the most common actually version of this, or you'll need to be able to solve the equation for zero to know how much time it took, okay? Because uh, they're usually asking you about the maximum in some way, maximum height usually, or, or time it took to get to that maximum height, or how long it took to get back to the ground. All right, so those are the three main types of questions that you will see. So part D, E, and then sort of the interpretation of E is, uh, is the other part of that, okay? So any questions, I know there's a lot of work there, uh, but any questions about how we got to any of it um, at this time? All right, so. Um, does anybody need me to scroll back down to see the work for any of this, or were you able to kind of keep up with that? I'll put that back there so you can see that work. All right, so before we continue, let me see. All right. Um, all right, so we're going to, uh, I'll give you a minute to kind of jot some of that down. If you need to come back and copy it uh, a bit later, um, we can do that. Let me see if I can just get a new, whoops, get a new uh, board here. So let's see here. Just gonna clear this canvas and then we will put a new, the new problem on there. So this is gonna be um, number three. So we'll just uh, copy this on and see how it works differently, if at all. It's very tiny, one moment. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this one. And this one is different because she's not throwing it, she's simply dropping it, okay? Uh, and I will tell you that the uh, EOC likes these problems probably more than even the ones where they're throwing them. They like to uh, see if if you can figure out how to deal with them if they're not having an initial velocity. So uh, again, weird name, Mary Mustang dropped keys from a window 40 feet above the ground to Patty Patriot, who was on ground level. Unfortunately, Patty did not catch the keys. Now, why did they put this in here? Unfortunately, Patty did not catch the keys because they want you to know that it actually hit the ground, okay? Because if she caught it, maybe she caught it above her head. We don't know how tall Patty Patriot is or at what height she caught it at. So they want you to be uh, clear that the keys were dropped from 40 feet above and hit the ground, okay? So that seems in, in uh, something that we don't need to know that she didn't catch the keys, but if she caught the keys, the height at uh, that given time would, or at the, at the point of catching would not be zero necessarily, okay? So they want us to make sure that this information tells us that uh, the keys do hit the ground, all right? So vertical motion model for the height of the keys in terms of time since Mary dropped them. So again, we're still gonna use, uh, they're telling us feet, so we're gonna use the American uh, version of this, the uh, negative uh, 32 feet per second squared. 
So we will have the negative one half times that. So this will be a negative 16 T squared, okay? Plus the V sub zero. Well, there is no V sub zero. She's not throwing it with an initial velocity. She's simply just letting it drop. So the initial velocity here is zero. So I'm not gonna put zero T. I don't need to put that, okay? So, I mean, if you wanna put that, you can, but it's just gonna disappear in the process here anyway. So this, uh, the second term, when something is simply dropped instead of thrown or uh, kicked or whatever, uh, that is gonna be a zero. So that term won't have a zero T. Now the initial height, that H sub zero, is gonna be 40, okay? So since there's no initial velocity to the dropping of it, we don't have that second term, okay? So that is part A, writing the vertical motion formula for a drop, okay? So a little bit simpler looking equation for sure, all right? Now, use the model from part A to find the time it takes the keys to hit the ground and round your answer to the nearest tenth, uh, indicating units of measure. So. Time for us is gonna be seconds here since we're using uh, the American version of 32 feet per second squared. So we will have that. Now, I wanna simplify this a little bit because the second part of this is again, the height at the time it hits the ground is gonna be zero. Um, but I don't necessarily wanna use this equation in its uh, format because the numbers are too big and if it simplifies, simplify. Again, both of these are divisible by eight. So if I do the division by eight before I write that second uh, version of this into the equation equal to zero, this will make my equation a little simpler for solving purposes, okay? Now this one is going to actually be easier to solve not using the quadratic formula because this one doesn't have a middle term, it makes factoring it significantly easier and faster, all right? So when you have a problem like this, always factor it. And the way we factor uh, a problem like this, okay, um, is, well, actually, no, we don't, wanna we don't wanna factor this one, sorry, scratch that. Uh, if this had a middle, if it didn't have, a, a, sorry, let me slow down. If this didn't have a C term, okay, we would want to factor it. Like if this had said 5t. If it didn't have an initial height, it's easier to factor, okay? Because um, we can just take out the common factor in the t and then have that. But in this situation, we actually want to use quadratic formula. So sorry about that. So uh, we will use quadratic again. So we're going to say t equals, this is going to be, um, actually solving this equation here. So T is gonna equal negative B, well there's no B, so we'll say zero, plus or minus the square root of B squared, well that's again zero, minus four times A times C, okay? And then all of that over two A, well two A is negative two, so we'll have that. Okay, let me uh, move something out of the way so we can see this a little better. So we'll simplify what's in here before we move to the next step. So this is obviously zero, um, zero squared is zero. Negative four times two is eight, times five is 40. So we get the square root of 40, which I know is not a perfect square. So we would get, um, and this is gonna simplify down here to negative four. So our new equation, or split equation, I should say, is gonna say t equals zero plus square root of 40 over negative four, or zero minus square root of 40 over negative four, okay? One of these is going to come out as a negative number. The zero plus square root of 40 is going to come out as a negative number because we're then divide that, whatever that positive number is, it's gonna be an irrational number, but it'll be positive. We'll come out negative when we uh, divide it by negative four. Okay, so uh, 40 
square root is 6.32. So if we round to the nearest tenth, we'll just call it 6.3. Uh, this one is the one that we will actually get a positive number from because this will get a negative divided by a negative. So we will get our positive answer. The one we need is there. The other one is uh, what we would call an extraneous solution, an extra solution. So 6.3 divided by 4 is 1.58. If we round, it is 1.6. Okay, so approximately 1.6 seconds is how long it would take for those keys to drop 40 feet to the ground. Okay, um, and then it says find the time at which the keys are 10 feet from the ground and round your answer to the nearest tenth and indicate the units of measure. Well, this is the same exact thing we were doing, except we're going to take this equation and instead of setting it equal to zero, we'll set it equal to 10. So part C is very much the same problem that we just did, except instead of on the ground at zero height, we will call part C 10, okay? Uh, but we wanna make sure that we're using this initial equation here, not this one um, that we simplified there, okay? Because uh, when we use this initial equation, maybe our common factors are different now, for example, I can't divide everything by eight and have this come out evenly. So my common factors to simplify this might be a little uh, different. So first thing I wanna do when I plug this uh, height of 10 in is move it to the other side and set this equal to zero again, okay? So I wanna subtract 10, subtract 10. Now I've got zero equals negative 16, oops, there should be t squared, t squared plus 30. Now I don't have quite as simple uh, a um, common factor, or I should actually I have a simpler common factor, it just does, it's not as big. So now I have uh, two is my only common factor, so I can divide this by two to make it a little easier to plug into the quadratic formula. So negative eight t squared plus 15, and then I'm just gonna go through this process again, okay? Uh, just time-wise, I'm not going to finish that out. You guys can, you know, figure out how, that we'll just plug in the quadratic equation into that quadratic equation and get a different number, okay? So, uh, again, using the context of the problem, do we only have one reasonable solution? And the answer will be yes. We're going to get a negative and a positive, and only the positive makes sense, okay? We're going to ignore these negative solutions for time, okay? You'll almost always get two negative solutions for time. The only time that won't happen uh, is you might get a zero and uh, a positive, okay? The zero obviously is, so let's say you're uh, kicking a ball off the ground, right? You're gonna get a parabola from that shape and the initial place where it starts off is at the ground, so that would be zero time, and then where it lands would be whatever that other time is. So the most you're gonna get is zero in a positive, but if you get a negative time, just ignore it. It doesn't make sense, okay? All right, so let's get to any questions here. Sorry, this took longer than expected. Um, so let's get to whatever questions we have. So Jules, real quick, yes. Okay, so I was like, I have the paper printed out right here and the one with the questions as well, mm -hmm. but it, the equation was different from what it has on the paper, and so was the answer. For which one? For this one? For this equation? Yes, for the one that we just did, for part A, B, and C. Uh, all right, so let me go to, let me uh, go to that equation. So you're talking about the answer key part of it? Yeah. All right, so the answer key part is using that initial formula, right? Of h equals negative 16 t squared plus 40. Okay, so um, it's just using that one. I just simplified that equation before actually plugging it into the quadratic formula because it made the number smaller. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions? um that we have let's let's actually go take a look at two and four since those are the ones you guys are going to be working on 
Um, all right, so let's see here. Uh, switch screens to this one. All right, so let's talk about these real quick so that we uh, make sure that we're not doing something weird or that something weird isn't happening co differently compared to what we just looked at for those problems. So um, this one, a water balloon is thrown downwards. Now this one is um, going to be something where you gotta pay attention to uh, that initial velocity. Okay, because it is, they are being thrown, but it's throwing down. Okay, so there's a reason that downwards is highlighted. Okay, in that equation, you should see that this initial velocity of seven is not going to be a plus seven. Okay, so if we scroll down to our answer key for that, all right, notice it's got a, um, and this is meters, so they're using uh, the, uh, 9.8 instead of the 16. Okay, so make sure you're paying attention to that as well. All right, so the initial velocity, sorry, it wasn't seven, that was the initial velocity, it was the three, that was the downward. So notice it's a negative three there. Okay, so if they're throwing something downwards, the uh, initial velocity is going to be a negative number. Okay, so pay attention to that. Also pay attention to the fact that they are using meters and not feet. Okay, so you'll be using this 9.8 in place of the G and, um, and writing your answers out as meters in, instead of feet, okay? So uh, that's the one thing you wanna pay attention to there. Otherwise, I think for the most part, these are gonna be similar uh, portions of the question. All right, number four, let's take a look. Goldie Hawk read on the internet that the height of a rock thrown using a slingshot from the top of a building can be modeled by this. Okay, uh, what's the height of the building from which it was thrown? All right, that's gonna be our C value here, right? That's our initial height, okay? Um, and at what velocity and in what direction was the rock thrown? So uh, this 48 is our initial velocity and since it's a plus, it was thrown up not down, okay? So the rest of this starts to uh, be taken care of. So this one, they want you to solve this one for when H is uh, H sub two. So when the time in seconds is two, okay? So they want you to just evaluate this for two seconds, right? What's the height at two seconds? Um, solve the equation H sub T equals 50. So you're gonna replace this whole thing with 50. So what's happening when the height is 50, okay? What is the time when the height is 50, okay? Um, and if you get two positive answers here, because it, this one is possible where you're gonna get two positive answers, okay? Because of somebody launching it off, there'll be two times at which it will be at 50, okay? On the way up, it'll be at 50, feet and on the way down, it'll be at 50 feet, okay? So are they both reasonable solutions? You wanna probably answer yes to that. All right, uh, I thought I saw a hand go up, let me just check. Uh, all right, Eli, what's up? Um, so we're gonna have to solve them in meters instead of feet? For part, for number two, yes. For uh, number three, that's gonna be uh, feet because of the 16. See the negative 16 on number four will we'll tell you that that's gonna be the uh, American version, the feet per second. All right. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions before we, I don't know that we're gonna have time for groups, so I'm gonna expect that I'll see some of you uh, in office hours today and tomorrow. Any other questions before, before we wrap up here. All right, so um, if you do have questions, if you start working on this and you run into some questions, please keep in mind office hours today and tomorrow for me. And actually you have until Friday to turn this thing in anyway. Uh, office hours the rest of this week are um, two to three, and then Friday we have office hours from nine to 11 for me, okay? So um, hopefully everyone, let's just see if we got 
One more question. All right, stop share on this. All right. So uh, you do need to do, uh, Chris asked, what questions do we have to uh, do? You're doing numbers two and four on your own here or with some friends if you want to uh, chat in a different setting. All right. Uh, all right. I think that'll do it today then. I'll see you in office hours if you need help. And fist bump. Happy Star Wars Day. Have a good rest of your afternoon, guys.